Hello everybody, my name is Retroboy03, and welcome back to another LEGO video review. Today, we'll be taking a look at the LEGO Ninjago movie, set number 70618, The Destiny's Bounty. This set comes with 2,295 pieces, 7 minifigures, and retails for around $150 in the United States. So, without further ado, let's get into the review. Starting off with the minifigures, here we have the only exclusive one in this set, this being a special version of Master Wu. Specifically, he has a new face print, but before we get to that, I do just want to quickly go through the rest of the details, although I have reviewed nearly the same figure before in my Master Falls video. But, um, he has the staff, the only printing on his leg is for the sandals, which looks nice. He has some pretty simple back printing. The cloth piece is nice, although the color isn't perfect. No need to remove that since there's, again, just the no printing underneath. There's his torso print, and this is his face, now no longer obscured by his beard. It's simple. It's actually pretty similar to the one in the CMF line. But I think it's a cool expression, rather than the determined look from the Master Falls and Ninja Mech Dragon. This version is just a lot, I don't know what you call it, more proud maybe? More content? I don't know. And his hat is the same version that's been appearing since 2011, except now it's back in tan instead of gold, which is really good, in my opinion. However, there is one gripe I do have with this figure, and that's the arm printing, or, well, actually the lack thereof. In the movie, Sensei had just some little gray stripes on his arms where the cuffs would be, like the ends of his sleeves, and that's not on this figure. It's only on the one in the collectible minifigures, and LEGO did something similar with this with the casual Lloyd, who also has arm printing exclusive to the CMF line, and just Cole, who doesn't get his arm printing in the $30 Manta Ray Bomber, and well, I think this is a huge problem, because like, I can't believe this, that LEGO would just r keep details off of a figure. Like, sure, m it seems almost backwards. Like, wouldn't you want people to want to get the most expensive sets to get the best versions? Like, come on, this set is $150 and we can't get a screen-accurate woo? I don't know about that, but yeah. Other than that, this figure's great and it's a pretty minute detail, so... It, it's not the fact that he doesn't have the detail that annoys me, it's the fact that LEGO purposefully made the detail exclusive to a CMF figure, and this is a $150 set that doesn't get it. But, let's move on to Kai. In terms of the ninja, Kai is pretty cool. Or should I say he's pretty hot? <laughs> I'm sorry, please, please stop me. Anyway, um... However, I think it's a bit odd how you can see the corner of his mouth on this side of his face peeking out of the mask, but it's fine. I have reviewed this figure before in my Master Falls video, so I'll be a bit quick here, but he has some nice torso printing and leg printing. I like getting this double scabbard and gunmetal. He has two silver katanas. And well, this is my first time getting to talk about the new mask piece, which is two pieces. If you don't know, there's this top piece, and then there's the bottom piece underneath. Um, that's just that you can't see the head underneath the mask, f because with the original you could see it from like that from some angles. This is what the mask piece looks like without the bottom half. Kai's expressions are nice. You have this face, which is a bit more happy, and you also have an angry face. And let me just get him back together so I can show you what the angry face looks like with the mask on. Pretty good stuff. So that's Kai, and now let's move on to Jay. Here we have Jay, who, of the six movie ninja, is not only the worst minifigure, but also the worst character in the movie, but I don't care, but that doesn't matter for this review, but yeah, I'm not a big fan of Jay's design, I just don't like the orange, as well as the fact, I don't know, I think that maybe there should have been a lighter blue for his torso, like just the standard blue some of the printing is, I don't know, I think Jay just looks a bit too dark here. His accessory is different though. It's a flail, and, well, that's fine. I really wish that Jay had kept his signature nunchucks for the movie, because this looks kinda stupid, but it works. He has some nice back printing. 
which I honestly like a bit more than the front. I don't know why. I just think the orange works better there. I don't know. I just don't like his front torso. His legs just look terrible to me. His, I mean, his mask is fine with just the little symbol up there, and Jay has two faces, just like well, all the ninja have two faces in this set. Which I guess is probably the probably a pretty good thing about the Ninjago movie, that they all got new faces. Although it is sad that now they look nothing like the originals, especially with Jay here, because why does Jay have brown eyebrows? And freckles. And his mouth. His mouth just looks so weird here. Like, why is there such a big gap between his bottom and top teeth? What's this mouth? It looks like, it looks like a misprint. Also, this, I mean, in this mouth doesn't even look like it should be here. It, the, the only character I can see this mouth working well on is Sonic the Hedgehog, which isn't good, obviously. I, I mean, like, the fact that this headpiece mouth would only work on... The, the fact that this mouth print would only work on Sonic, not not Sonic. Sonic's pretty cool. Sonic's all right. Turning Jay's head around, he looks angry, which I like a bit more because it looks less stupid. Although it still looks very stupid. Also, why is Jay missing his chipped eyebrow in the movie? You done goofed, Lego. So that's Jay. Not my favorite. So we move from one of my least favorite figures in the set, in fact, my least favorite figure in the set, to one of my favorites. Here we have the new Zane. And first off, I really like how he's fully white. It just helps to make him stand out a lot more than all the other figures when standing side by side with them, since obviously all the other ones are just black with colored accents, while Zane is purely white, and that's nice detail. His accessory is just a black bow and arrow, which isn't super common, so I like that. And he also gets a quiver on the back. So that's also pretty nice. I'm just removing that. You can see his back printing there. His front torso printing is also pretty good. I really like how this figure's suit is pretty much monochromatic. I think it's just a pretty nice detail. And while I haven't really been pointing out the details on the other ninja's masks, I think Zane's is cool because it's a throwing star, which is a nice homage to... It's when Zane used a throwing star, because that was actually a good weapon. What kind of ninja uses a bow and arrow? Yeah, but I'm getting off track. So this is Zane's face. It's a face. It looks pretty funny, but it's intentional, so that's fine. We also get Zane's angry face, which I like a lot more, because it looks less silly. Although, again, I, I can enjoy Zane's main face. I, I just prefer this one, because this one looks better. This isn't a J scenario where one face is so putrid to look at that I, so that so I have to look at the other side to not die. But yeah, and I didn't actually give you a good look at Zane's faces with the mask on, so this is Zane's main face. You can notice that both sides of his mouth show through the mask, so that's no good. And on the back, this is his alternate expression, which again, I just think looks better. And again, I th I think it's really weird how so many of the ninja, um, you can see the corners of their mouth through the through the sides of the mask. That's that's a really weird thing, and you'd think Lego would have done a bit more work on that so that that didn't happen because it looks pretty strange. But anyways, that's Zane. Overall, a pretty cool figure. Next up here we have Cole, who has traded his trademark scythe for a hammer. I mean, I guess it works since Earth Ninja and all, I guess. I mean, I, I don't know if it's supposed to be an iron hammer. It looks like it's made of stone, though, because if it's supposed to be iron, Lego really screwed up. Because it's just normal gray. But anyway, I'm cold. Yeah, just looking at his torso compared to his legs, that's an issue. The gold is so much worse on the legs. It almost looks like it's supposed to be dark brown. They really... That's such a screw-up. So that's just not very good. Um, he does have his arm printing, though, so that's nice. J just some nice, simple bands, but it's nice. I like the gold in there. 
hole has some pretty simple back printing. You can see his face is sort of chill, while the other side is a bit more coal-ish. And I do definitely like that they did do a good job to keep Cole's face print and looking rather similar to how he did in the show. Like, obviously, it's changed, but not too much. I can live with this. And anyway, this is Cole's main expression, which I think looks pretty good. This is his alternate face, which also looks pretty good. So, yeah. That is Cole, and well, honestly, I'm just going to leave him like this because Cole actually looks fine with just the top headpiece on, while the others look kind of weird. Probably has something to do with the fact that Cole's normal hairpiece looks pretty stupid like this. So yeah, that's Cole. A pretty good figure, although the leg printing really messes with it. The next figure we get in this set is Lloyd the Green Ninja, and... I've already taken a look at this figure with the Kendo Lloyd poly bag, so I'm going to be rather quick. The torso and legs are nice. He has some nice arm printing now, which carries over the pattern on his torso, as well as just having some green bands. This is his back torso. He comes with this nice new sword piece, which I definitely like. You also have a golden tassel connected to the back, which is a new color for the movie for that piece, and we do get some more on the bounty. Anyway, this is Lloyd's main face. This is Lloyd's alternate face, pretty angry. Lloyd's main face, and I would recommend that, because Lloyd's main face is pretty strange. Just look at it. Yeah, I am not a fan of how, unlike the other ninja, Lloyd doesn't have either face print that could just be normal. Because with all of the others, they at least have one face print that just has their mouth just closed normally. I mean, the exception there being Zane, but he's Zane, so it's okay. And this is Lloyd's alternate face print. And there is one other thing we get with him, and that is this side build of the ultimate weapon. And it's pretty nice. You get a... It has a little key ring here on the back with just a chain. I wish that the Technic pins had been in black, though, since not only would it make this look better, but it would also help make a mock I'm wor I've been working on look a lot better. I'm not going to get too much into that. He can just hold the weapon like that. I'll, I'll move his... I'll twist his head a bit because it's bugging me. And... The set does also come with a red lightsaber blade for if you want to fire it off. So you can just stick that in here, get it into his hand, and that is this minifigure. So, oh, okay, then there's a cat. That's promising. So, um, so that's Lloyd. And now... Let's move on to Nia before my cat eats the Destiny's Bounty. So here we have... Wait a minute. So here we have Nia, the last figure included in this set. And she's pretty nice. As you can tell, she is pretty much done entirely in gunmetal, except for the mask. So that's nice. Um, she, much like Sensei, has just sandals printed on her legs, and in fact, I believe that it's the same print, just in a different color. But anyway, she has the nice leg armor piece, which is just cloth, but it looks fine. You can see that the print on her torso is pretty simple, but there is a reflective silver stripe there around her collar as well as just a little light blue outline and lego did capture the negative space around her torso so that would be so that's good her accessory is a spear which is just nothing new just a black tassel stuck on the bottom nia's face print is new just like all the others and it doesn't really look like Nia, but like Cole, it doesn't look as off as the rest of them. You could pass this off as being normal Nia from the show. 
Or I guess now this is Normalia from the show. And her alternate face is... It's basically the same thing, just she has a little crease between her eyebrows and her mouth is a bit different, so she's a bit more frowny. Bit disappointed there. And like, d if I get the mask on, you'll be able to see that through the mask, the faces really look pretty much identical. And that isn't very good. So this is her primary face. This is her secondary face. They literally look the same. So, yeah, that's Nia, a pretty good figure, and the last figure of this set. So now that the video's nearly 20 minutes long already, let's take a look at the actual Destiny's Bounty, why don't we? So here we have the Destiny's Bounty, a set that is an absolute marvel to behold. It's also very large, at about two feet, a bit less than two feet long, um, I believe... 22 inches so yeah it's pretty big doesn't really fit on my table because i have a very small table and i need to get a new one see so yeah, i'm gonna be taking a look at this model in sections because you really can't see any details from far away so to start with i might as well show you some smaller sections that can be removed from the bounty starting with the um i guess the as the, um, the steering section, so... Starting off with this section, we have the first of the ship's three sails, which is pretty nice. I like the shape cut into it, and I also like the print to get a bit of depth in there, as well as having Sensei Wu's logo printed on there. I'm also a big fan of the 2017 The Lego Group trademark. That's pretty good. But yeah, also these sails are made of cloth, which automatically makes this the best Destiny's Bounty ever, because plastic sails are no good. And if you're curious, on the back, the sails look like this, so it's not great, but at least it doesn't look plain out bad. They did at least make the Technic pieces brown for this side. But, anyway, it'll be easier to get a look at the rest of this model if we just pull that off, which is a pretty simple action. So, here we go. Here on the back, we have this double-sided banner, which says Dojo on it in Ninjago language. We have two lanterns hanging out, as well as some exhaust. And from the back, you can see this large window. Well, not really a large window, but a latticed window. We have some plants growing in pots on either side, which is nice to see. And you can see that normally dangling over the gra over the deck of the bounty, but here it's just sort of smushed. There is this nice lantern, which has another one of those gold tassels, as well as a trans red minifig head. So that's a pretty nice piece to get. You can see in here there is a telescope, as well as um, that will be a bit hard to see, but up here in front of the steering wheel we have I don't know what the pieces are called, so I'm just going to call it the steering wheel. Here we have this nice compass print, which. I don't believe is new. I think it might have come from an elves set. I'm not too sure, but it's definitely a nice piece. Behind that, there is a grate, so there aren't any studs to sand a figure on. So if you wanted to get a figure to steer the ship, you would just have to connect them to the wheel without having any actual stud connections. Um, if you wanted to get a figure inside, you could just lift up these, um, these garage door pieces in tan, which... It's a really nice look for the roof. I'm a big fan of that. And it's a bit hard to see from inside, so I'll just yeah, I'll just lift this up so you can see better. Here on this side we have a sextant. And on the other side of that table is just um where's the best way to look at this? A little map print which shows I'll just remove that. It shows the Destiny's Bounty, Master Falls, and the Temple of the Ultimate Ultimate Weapon. And this map also comes in Master Falls, so nothing special there, but it's a nice piece to get. So yeah, so that's the steering cabin is what I'm going to call it. And now let's move on to the next removable section of the bounty. After you remove, the, remove that, the deck, well, the steering cabin, you can pull off this section here, which is the ship's dojo. 
From the front, you have a ladder to gain ap access to the upper floor. You have a flag that says the word dojo on it in Ninjago text. And there's also a potted plant. On the sides, we have tank treads used as little, um, I guess they, they would be little roof pieces, even though there's nothing they would be hanging over. We have some nice bamboo designs for the windows, or I guess just the sides. Um, two windows in the back, as well as some pipes going up. Same on the other side, and on the interior, we have a really nice interior here, just looking in. You have a nice design in there for, I guess, I don't know if that would be the floor or just some mats, but it's nice. We have a a script here, with scr scroll here, which isn't exclusive. It also comes in the $10 Spinjitsu training set, but it's nice. It says Dojo on the top and Woo on the bottom. And on the sides, you can see a lantern, a crossbow on the wall, a barrel full of three pretty simple weapons, a training dummy, and a sheath of two swords. So yeah, that's the dojo. Another nice section, and now let's move on to the last removable section of the bounty. This last section is a bit underwhelming, but it's still important. You can just grab these boxes and just sort of wedge out this section of floor. Despite being just a little bit of floor, this piece does have some nice detail to it. You have another little grate, which I'm guessing you the idea is that you could open it up and use this t as access to the lower level. And in the boxes, this one has two fish inside. This one, j the barrel, has a, has a can of red soda. And the last one is definitely my favorite, because in... Inside of the other box, we have two Ninjago trading cards, one of Sensei Wu DX and one of Kai DX. So those are pretty awesome to get. I love collecting the Ninjago trading cards, so this is a, an, an awesome inclusion. So those are all the removable sections. Now let's get on to the interior of, well, I guess, below decks. Sorry if the camera's a bit unsteady in this section. I'm just having to hold the camera over the ship so you can get a better look inside. But um, starting off here, we have a ladder. We have some lights all around the below decks. Here we have our weapons rack featuring an arrow blade, two golden shurikens, and a piece of vermilion armor. So, that, so those are some pretty nice references to the show. Over here we have another one with the hilt of Nauticon's gin blade, as well as two side daggers and a butterfly sword. Here we have Sensei Wu's bed, along with an anachondrite skull, as well as a quill pen and a letter. And there's a pretty cool feature with the bed here, where um, if we just take Sensei Wu... Um, give me a second, the camera's gonna go to shaky in this section. Okay, so if we just take Sensei Wu, we can just fold open the bed, which is neat, and then we can just slide his feet in, put this back on, and boom, Sensei Wu is tucked into bed. 10 out of 10 best Lego set. That th No feature in any set will ever top this. So that's pretty neat. On this side, things are a bit better in my opinion, though also a bit simpler. Here we have Garmadon's helmet from the first two seasons, as well as here we have this great piece, which is a sticker of the picture of the five ninja from the show from episode 19 the time travel episode which used to be my favorite episode before season four came out so that's a really nice piece to get i mean jay i'm not sure what's up with jay's hair and also lloyd's hair should be uncolored like zane's but it's still a really nice piece to get and i am very glad that they decided to make it Although, of course, the it should be a picture as opposed to this, which looks more like a drawing with just the one color. Anyway, over here we just have a sink as well as a toilet, which is important. So now let's uh, move on to the remainder of the stuff on the upper deck, which isn't that much. Looking here at the details still remaining on the ship, we can start with the two dragon heads, which are some pretty nice builds with some creative pieces. I'm a big fan of the golden bananas used as eyebrows. 
and you can open and close the mouths on these guys and as you can see you can also move the piece they're on up and down so you can have them both move up or down at once so that's pretty neat Behind them we have a little play feature where we just have these hidden compartments for weapons. Here we have two katanas, and here we have two daggers. Pretty simple, but I'm glad that it's here, and I'm definitely glad that it, that, that wasn't a compartment to get to like some spring-loaded shooters, because honestly this set feels like a UCS set, so I don't want there to be a ton of obtrusive play features unless they're important and ship things. Like this, where we can just turn this piece to... Lower the anchor, and just keep turning it to raise the anchor back up. And in fact, it's not anchor, because there is also one on this side. So that's pretty nice. Down here we have four little buoys, which is nice to see, as well as... I really like how this entire section here, we have this dark brown stripe. And a lot of that is studs not on top buildings. That's really cool to see, in my opinion. Anyway, we have some more plants, as well as these these lanterns, four of which are are um, along the What am I trying to say here? Along the sides of the ship. Between the two masts, we have this line, which has three more lanterns with golden tassels, as well as these two flags, both of which have the stickers on both sides, as well as this different lantern up front that looks a bit more useful and a bit less ornamental. The sails are nice. They both show, they combine to show a picture of a dra of a dragon, which is cool. And on top of this one, we have another flag showing the dragon. So that's nice. Over here, we have two fishing poles. While on the other side, on the side here, is, um, can I get to it? Um, a shovel, a broom, and two fish, one of which is orange, which is nice to see. Over here, in between the two removed floor sections, is just a teacup as well as a teapot, so that's nice to see. And I believe the teapot isn't that... I believe this is the only non-mini doll base set to, get to include that teapot, so that's nice. I really like this whole, like, railing design around the sides. This looks so cool, and I'm really glad LEGO included it. Again, it just looks really nice, although it can be a bit difficult to get the pieces to angle in the way you want them to. And back here, this isn't exactly a feature, but we have the little section here, which has a Sensei Wu hat on it. And this is the place where this J Bounty's rocket boosters would be. And while it's not a feature, you can just fold that down to get this into sort of a flight mode. Like in the show, I'm, I'm gonna... It would actually bend all the way around. Let me just see if I can do that. So if you really wanted to, you could bend that piece all the way around to, make, to put it into the show-accurate flight position, but... I don't think it looks good here, so I think it looks better just down like this, and best, up like this. I'm just getting along to the back here. Gonna try not to have let this fall off my table. Here we can see Destiny's Bounty on these signs, written in both English and Ninjago language. Here we have this telescope, which is a simple but nice piece, making use of a sextant and a bucket. And behind here, there's just a little bit of floor space, so you could stand at least one... Actually, no, at least two, probably three or four figures in here, so that's nice. Down below, we just have our rudder, which can't really do anything, but it's a nice detail. So now let's just put this ship back together for one final overview, and then my final thoughts. So, with everything reassembled, the bounty looks pretty awesome here. I like how tall the back section is. It works. And also, like, again, everything just fits together a lot more when you don't have huge holes in the floor. The three sails look very nice together, although there it is unfortunate that there's no rigging, but it doesn't really bother me since... I didn't even notice that, the, notice there, that there was no rigging until Jang Bricks made a video about it. Or more accurately, like, I knew there was no rigging, I just didn't think, oh, wow, there's no rigging, that's a problem. I was just like, hmm, good thing I don't have to tie a bunch of strings through these sails, because that would be annoying. But yeah, so I think this set looks pretty good in, it, in its individual parts, even better when, I, when it's all put together like this. Let's stop wasting time and go on to my final thoughts. So, would I 
recommend the Destiny's Bounty for $150. Heck yes. While $150 is a high price, for 2,295 pieces, it's actually a pretty good bargain. Not to mention that these pieces go together to make something absolutely breathtaking. Every detail fits together so well, there isn't a single thing I don't like about this build. And, I mean, from what I've seen from Season 8, it looks like this is the design of Bounty that's going to be going into Season 8 and of the show and onward, which I'm glad about, because, well, sure, I am nostalgic about the original design, this one is just objectively so much better. So, yeah, that's another th reason to get this set. It's going to be the Bounty that appears not just in the movie, but in the show from now on. And it's just such an awesome build to get for that. Also, I mean, the only problems with this set are with the minifigures, and even then, it's not really problems, just small things that I personally am not a fan of that are objectively fine, but subjectively I take issue with. So yeah, this set gets a 100% A++++++ from yours truly. Get it, get it as soon as possible, and thank you all so much for watching, and I will see all of you... In the next video. Bye-bye.